lot of stuff to be cooked. So please come. It will be a wonderful time. I promise you. Yeah. We have fried uh, chicken if you don't like fish. There we go. So you don't have an excuse anymore. Bye. <laughs> anyway. Do what? Nobody doesn't like fried right. chicken. Right. So if you don't like fried chicken or fried fish, then. Uh, and dessert. Right. And dessert, then, then come tonight. We'll change your mind. Um, anyway, a couple other things we've got. Um, if you look in your pew uh, in front of you, uh, where our normal like offering uh, offering envelopes and stuff like that are, you'll see this. This one is a little different. This is our Annie Armstrong Easter offering. This is uh, something that we do every year um, around Easter time. This is an offering directly for missions uh, with the North American Mission Board. Uh, this is for um, for missionaries in their churches all around North America. Um, and so, if you would like to to give to that, this is trying to push to, to help those people. Um, this is in the few, in the pew in front of you. Um, so anyway, you can you can put that in the offering plate as they go by. We will get that to them. Um, a couple other things before I get to this really short announcement um, is uh, the mission trip to Mexico. We have a sign-up sheet um, out on this bulletin board over here. I know that there are some people who have expressed interest in it who haven't signed up yet. Um, and if if you are wanting to do that, then I want to encourage you to please um, please sign up so that way we can have an accurate head count of, of what to expect and um, all that stuff. Anyway, if you still have questions or you want more information, talk to my lovely wife. She will uh, she'll let you know anything anything you want to know about that trip. She's got it. Um, all right, so this is um, this is looking forward to the summer. This is for Vacation Bible School. Um, and this is this is just like something to keep in mind as we're as we're even now praying for Vacation Bible School this summer. Um, this says every year, more than twenty five thousand churches host a, big, a VBS, a Vacation Bible School, enrolling nearly three million children and adults, resulting in more than eighty thousand professions of faith or salvations each year. Um, many of the children who come to know the Lord are spiritual orphans. They have no Christian influence in their homes. Um, and so what we want to pray for as we get into Vacation Bible School season this summer, um, first of all, is, is for these children that come and that participate, that God would open their hearts, that He would open their eyes, so that they can see Him and know Him better. Um, and, and some, like, like we even said, like these 80,000 around each year, that come to know Christ for the first time, but we also want to remember to pray for their families, to pray for their homes, to pray for the people that they are surrounded by all the time, that God would not only change the hearts of these kids, but he would change the, the hearts of their homes as well, so that they can grow in that relationship with Christ. Um, anyway, and then, um, this, is, this one is more specific to us. Um, this is uh, on Sunday, the June 11th, this is the day before Vacation Bible School, we always do an enrollment day um, where, the, where the kids come and they'll register and all that stuff. Um, usually we have some games, we have some snacks, stuff like that. Uh, we're going to do things a little differently this year. Uh, this year at 4, uh, we'll start with like welcome and registration for the kids and then around 5 o'clock or, or whenever, whenever the time is ready, uh, we're going to be having a church-wide like fellowship outreach for the families that are coming in uh, to register their kids for vacation Bible school. So so now that we know that, that there are so many children who do not have a spiritual influence in their homes, um, we're not only going to be praying that that changes, but we want to be taking active steps to that towards that as well. We want that to change in our community. Um, so what we're going to do is, is we're going to have hamburgers and we're going to have food. We're going to have a meal that night. For the families who are coming in to register their kids for vacation Bible school, that we want to take a part in, um, like the whole church. This isn't just for you know, whoever's working vacation Bible school, whoever's kids are coming. This is this is something that we're trying to get behind so that we can make all the families who come in and register their kids so that we can make them comfortable, so we can help them see this is what First Baptist Church is. This is um, you know this is this is the God that we serve. This is this is the, the Jesus that loves us and that loves you. And so we want to help them see the gospel better through our lives, through the things that we're doing, by inviting them for a meal with us. Uh, 
So anyway, that's that's just something that uh, that I pray that we can get <coughs> uh, that I pray that we can support that we can do um, praying praying towards this, knowing that that God will uh, that God can work toward this change in these families, uh, just like as he uh, as he changes the hearts and minds of these kids through vacation. Anyway, so that's just something to be praying for uh, as we go towards the summer. Um, I'm going to pray for us this morning. After that, we'll have we'll have our children's church. Um, I just want to want to invite you guys. Please please pray with me this morning. Dear God, thank you so much for this opportunity we have to worship you together. Thank you that we can trust you. Thank you that you're taking care of us. That you know uh, that you know our lives. Um, that you're not disconnected from us, but that you, that you know about us and you care about. God, tonight, as we uh, have a time of fellowship together, I uh, pray that we would be lifted up together, we would be encouraged, uh, and God, that we would be able to, to reach out to our community, um, Lord, both with Harvest, with Vacation Bible School, with, with everything that we're doing, I pray that we can serve our community, that we can serve you and love you. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, children, uh, we're having children's church, and uh, my wife will be leading them. I'll go, mind you. While they're coming forward, uh, just to let people know, how many of y'all came to last year's Seder dinner? Enjoyed that? Y'all liked it. It, it, was, it went over real well. We are going to be doing that again. It'll be the Sunday night uh, before Easter, which is Palm Sunday. We'll be doing it during that evening service. And what I'd like to do is offer if there's anyone, male or female, that would like to be involved in the planning and the setting up of the Seder dinner, uh, if you would please see Beth. Uh, or just let her know. She'll make sure to get in touch with you. Uh, but we will be having that on that week. I'm looking forward to it. Hey, guys. Um, I wanted to ask you guys, have y'all ever had some bad stuff happen in your own? Sometimes bad things happen. Some sad things happen in our lives. Um, I found a verse in the Bible that really helps us when bad things happen. Um, and I really like it. The first time I heard it was in Spanish when I was younger. And I didn't understand it. Um, and now I do, and I really, really like it. It's from Psalms. It's 27, um, verses 13 and 14. Um, it says, like, it's talking about when bad things happen. It, um, David says, I would have despaired um, unless I believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord. So they're saying, when really bad things happen, I would have been, I would have despaired. I would have been really sad, but I believed that God was good. Do we believe that God is good? And that even when bad things happen, that God is good. Uh, he says, I would have despaired unless I believed I would see the goodness of the Lord. Um, but sometimes it's hard to see that God is good even when things are bad. Huh? When things are bad, I mean, it sounds like, how can God be good? But you know what the next verse, um, it starts by saying, wait. Wait for the Lord. And if you can't see that God is good yet, wait. Wait for the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. And so when bad things happen and things are really difficult, God tells us, wait, and you'll see. You'll see that he's good. Let's pray. Lord, thank you um, so much for everything that you do in our life. Thank you that you have a plan for our lives. And that even when things are hard and scary and bad, um, that we know that you're good. Um, and that if we just wait on you, you'll show us um, that even when bad things happen. Love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. It is good to see you with us this morning. We're going to give you an opportunity to fellowship and to enjoy one another's company. Would you stand, please, as the instruments play? Hug somebody's neck, shake somebody's hand. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning.
As you're making your way back to your seat, sing with me this hymn. It's called Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. Exalt the name of the Lord. Sing this with me.
beautiful song about coming into the presence of what God's already accomplished for us. Would you stand with me? As you can see, we're doing the Lord's Supper tonight. You may be seated. 
here this morning. And what we're asking, if you would, during this time when we're taking up the offering, would our families get together? Let's get close together with our families as we take up the Lord's Supper this morning. So during this time, if you're scattered a little bit, let's get together as a family. together to participate as family uh, and I know that it, it is important if you get that chance to, to take communion to, to, to do the Lord's Supper there with your, your family uh, I'll promise you this there will be a time in the future that you will be grateful you did and there will be a time in the future that you will wish you could do it again to be able to come and to remember our salvation together. We have no salvation, we have no righteousness except for the broken body and spilled blood of Jesus Christ. This is our time to come together and as a corporate to church to remember what God has done for us. Remember your salvation and to celebrate it humbly <coughs> together. Jesus came he brought his disciples together, much like they had done many other times and many other settings, to celebrate Passover. And he took that body, that piece of bread, and he broke it. And he handed it out to them. He said, do this in remembrance <coughs> of me. Father, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you will bless our time together, that you will bless this time of communion, bless this bread, bless this wine, Lord, that we may remember you. And as we break bread together, Lord, that we may remember what you have done for us. We ask this in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. <coughs>
His body was broken so that your chains may also be. Celebrate with me in remembering him. That same night, he talked about his blood being shed, compared it to the cup. His disciples didn't understand. They had to look forward to Jesus and his salvation. Praise God, we're able to look back. I'm able to know not it's coming, but my salvation is here. My debt was paid by his precious blood. drop of it priceless and yet every bit of it needed so that our sins may be washed completely clean no matter what you've done no matter how bad you might feel about it the blood of Jesus Christ has taken care of that and you may celebrate that this morning with me Take this as what it is, family dinner, and yet at the same time, a family remembering the fact that our Father still cares. Father, Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for this time of communion that we may be in communion with you. I thank you for my brother standing here and for all of those that are out there right now working to share your gospel with others. Lord, that we may be in communion with them. I ask this in your heavenly name. Amen. All right. Well, this morning I have a, uh, I have to, 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 to get some help.
everybody together is supposed to be really good at it, right? All right, well, I gotta know. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this by. I think we should do it by stinging. Stinging would be good. If you have caught at least 100 fish in your lifetime, stand up. If you have caught, not at one time, if you have caught at least 100 fish in your lifetime, stand up. All right. If you, if you have caught a fish that was more than 10 pounds, stay standing. All right, still got a few. I'm going to weak this down a little bit more. All right, if you have caught more than 200 fish in your lifetime. Oh, I'm getting there. <laughs> what about one fish over 18 pounds? That's a pretty good sized fish. Wow. All right, if you have caught more than 500 fish in your lifetime. Whoa. <laughs> I am so not in this thing anymore. If you have ever lied about how many fish you have caught in your life,
They're both very important, but which one do you really use? We know that Jesus talked a lot about fish. We're not going to go about where it is. Jesus talked a lot about fishing in the Bible. And in fact, he even compared us to, 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 to fishing uh, for, uh, for, for men. And let, let's look at that real quick. Y'all turn with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to actually stay in Matthew. We're going to be with a couple of places there. But we're going to be in Matthew, chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4, and I'm going to start in verse 17. Matthew 4, 17. I still hear pages turning. When you get there, say, uh-huh. Uh-huh. So be all quick. All right, Matthew 7, excuse me, Matthew 4, verse 17 through 20. From then on, Jesus began to pre preach, repent, because the kingdom of heaven has come near. And as he was laughing along the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the sea, since they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. Now look. There's a lot of places in the scripture where you can hear this same story. It's slightly different from way to way as to how it comes out, but here's what it basically boils down to. Simon, or Peter and, and his brother, why did I just forget his brother's name? <laughs> Andrew, thank you. Andrew and Peter were fishing, and when the way they fished, they had these kind of like long canoe-looking boats. They were kind of in between a rowboat and a canoe, and they would go out and they would fish, uh, over in, and, and they would do it all night. Now, some of their boats were a little bigger and they had sails, but they usually weren't very big. If they needed to have a lot of fish or, or to, to catch a lot of fish, they would bring in another boat and they'd come in beside it. But these fishing boats, they were out and they were fishing, and, and Jesus was speaking to them during the daytime. Now, the thing is, is they didn't fish during the daytime. They fished at night. Okay? They did fish some, but they... they I mean, even today, if you want to catch white perch, it's sun up, sun down, and overnight, right? And the best times to catch it. Uh, well, that was the way for them, too. They would catch the fish at night so that they had fresh fish to sell first thing in the morning. And that's how they were doing it. And Jesus called them, and he tells them, he says, I want you to come with me, and I will make you fishers of men. I don't know about y'all, but that's a little bit confusing, isn't it? I mean, what do you make the hook with? I mean, if you want to catch a man, what do you bait the hook with? The women are sitting there, well, that's not hard. It's through his stomach. Well, it's pretty easy. You want to bait the hook for a cop, you use a... To see, y'all know, know that if you want to catch a preacher, you use fried chicken. If you want to catch a preacher's son, you use chicken nugget. Okay? It's really not that hard. I, I don't think that they were all that confused, but it definitely laid out for us being able to look back on it. It's been explained. We know what this means. Jesus was telling them, I want to use you to draw people unto me. I'm going to make you be fishers of men. Now, for a long time, theologians have kind of uh, done this as uh, the preaching ministry or ministry in general, where you would go out and you would bring people in to hear the message. In fact, Jesus used that same uh, explanation when he was doing a, a line of parables. You can turn with me to the uh, stay in book of, uh, of Matthew, but we are going to Matthew chapter 13. Just flip over a few pages. In Matthew chapter 13, starting in 47. I was close. Matthew 13, 47. Folks, I put that in the wrong place. There is no Matthew 13, 47. I'm in the book of Mark. That's why it's not in Mark. Uh, yeah, I'm telling you, you can, you, you can easily mess this thing up. Matthew 47 uh, in chapter 13. Now, let's get in the right book here. All uh, y'all are sitting there saying, I beat the preacher. It's not hard to do. All right, Matthew chapter 13, verse 47 Here. Again, the kingdom of heaven. It says again because he's already been explaining the kingdom of heaven. You know why Jesus had to explain the kingdom of heaven? It's hard to understand. So he explained it over and over again. And this is one of his explanations. He says, 
For the kingdom of heaven is like a large net thrown in the sea. It collected every kind of fish, and when it was full, they dragged it ashore and sat down, and they gathered the good fish in the containers, but they threw out the worthless ones. So it was at the end of the age, the angels will go out and separate the evil people from the righteous and throw them into the blazing furnace. In that place, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Does that sound good? No. No, no it, it sounds bad. And basically what he's saying is, is that the kingdom of heaven, and in this sense, the kingdom of heaven is us. Okay, this is the net that will go out. And he's talking about how it will go out and it will sweep in a large group of the fish in the sea. But you know what? Not every fish that's in the water is a fish, right? And not everything that swims in the water is a fish, right? Right. And there's some fish you're just, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but we catch a lot of bar fish and mud cats, especially at night. I don't like bar fish. I don't like mud cats. You may like them. If you want them, let me know. I'll bring a bunch of them to your house. You will get plenty of those. We don't like those. We throw those out. We keep the good fish. And that's really what he's saying. He says, look, there is a time when the ministry of God, when the people of God will go out and like a large net, they will sweep in a lot of people. But there will come a time when God himself will sort those out between the righteous and the evil. I hate to tell y'all, but I feel more evil than righteous most of the time. If you can't say, oh me, amen, something, it, right? right? Do you feel righteous most of the time? No, I don't. And I'm a little worried sometimes. I'm like, man, Lord, which one am I? Because when I'm looking at my behavior and he says, son, don't worry about it. He says, I'm not worried about, I'm not going to be counting on your righteousness. I'm going to be counting on my <laughs> God too. And he's going to look down as you say, who has the blood of God covered? Who has chosen and committed themselves to me that I may commit myself to them for eternity? And, and he's going to come down and he's going to do the sorting. Y'all, I sort fish, but I used to throw buffalo out. I used to. Grass car. Didn't even think you would want to eat a grass car. You know that grass car grill is pretty good too? So well, I don't know about that, Mike. Well, trust me. First of all, how hungry are you? Don't it make a difference? I've heard people say, well, you can eat that fish as long as it's hot, right? As long as you eat it right out of the grease. But don't let it cool off. So I don't like my fish to cool off anyway. But if you don't want to eat it when it cools off, if there's flavors that come out of it you don't want to eat, I don't want to eat them when they can't hardly be tasted either. But that depends on how hungry you are. There's a time when we as a church, we'll, we do throw big nets in the water. We do try and sweep people in by big net works, don't we? We have revivals. Uh, we're looking at a big crusade next year with the Harvest uh, Initiative. We're looking at, uh, we do vacation Bible school. Youth like to do camps and children. We do camps. We do missions. We'll do anything to try and scoop a lot of them up. I like to go, uh, we used to have a thing called Youth Evangelism Conference. I used to take kids to that. And it was just that. We'd have some big name band come in, some big name speaker. And, and kids would go out and invite their friends to go. Say, hey, you want to go to a concert, an overnight, away from mom and dad. Y'all, let me just go ahead and tell you, it doesn't take a whole lot of work to get a kid to say yes to that. Okay, you're going to go hear a rock concert in Alexander or Lafayette, and you can spend the night in a hotel. They're like, yeah, I want to go. And then you get them there, and the word of God is preached in their life. And a lot of them are motivated and moved by the Holy Spirit moving in that room. And they start to waver on their selfishness and start to think, maybe I really want to commit myself to something that's wrong. Right. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes I see them motivated like we will be unified through crying. And they got this big emotional moment. And a lot of those kids come in and they get saved. And I'm sitting there thinking... Man, I'm sorry, there's only 40 kids in that group and 15 of them got saved. Um, may need to do a little bit of work there and some discipleship, right? I'd look at it, and I'd be honest, I'd get a little judgmental. I'd look at some kid, I'm thinking, you know, this is your 14th time to get saved for the first time. Maybe, maybe it's not sticking. And I start to think, well, maybe that fish isn't good. You know, my job is not to sort the fish, is it? My job is to fish. I preach. And I'm going to keep preaching. The other week, y'all let me go. I went to Russ and I preached to a bunch of people there. 
You know, you throw out the word of God, you throw out the gospel, and something happens and people get saved. Do you know if it's real? I don't. Somebody looks at you and says, no, I'm not interested, and they walk out. Is that real? I don't know, but I know this. There is a time for us as the church to just simply do the labor and scoop them up. Let me ask you something. Do you like to fish when the fish aren't biting? Some people are like, I like to fish, just period. Great. I don't know about y'all. I'm a little bit more on the, uh, I was going to say OCD. That's not, it's more ADD. I'm an ADD fisherman. I fish. If the fish aren't biting, I find something else to do. Dad used to take me fishing and keep the skis in the boat. That way we go fishing, I get bored because the fish aren't biting. He'd go wear me out on the skis a couple of times, and then he'd throw me back in the boat, and he'd go back to fishing. Because I couldn't keep my mind set. I get frustrated, easily distracted if the fish aren't biting. And you know what? I think sometimes we as a church just quit fishing because the fish weren't biting. Or because, yeah, you caught some, but it just seemed like you got more trash than you got more fish. Sometimes I don't like to catch a whole lot of fish. Because you got to clean every one of them. Let me go ahead and let y'all know, evangelism gets messy. You bring them in, you get them saved, you take them up there, you put them in the water, you bring them back out, you bring them up here. They are not completely dressed. They don't have everything cleaned off of them. There's still a time you got to get your hands dirty and you got to get in and discipleship. Heads up, some of y'all are still needing a little cleaning on you too. And messing with you is a little messy at times. Heads up. Lord's still trimming on me. There are men that have to come into my life very often and knock off a few more scales. Praise God they don't give up on fishing. And then even then, you know, there are times when you can. You can go out and you can scoop them all up. But have you ever noticed that some people just don't get in the net? You just can't catch some fish in the net. You can't get the net in there to where they're at. Now, if they're all up in the trees, you've got to go in with a jig, right? Right in that one spot. I think it was Mr. Tommy telling me about there was a spot on Yucatan where he'd go in and take his pole and move the, the duckweed back out of the way and make one little hole. And he'd go down that one little hole and catch a fish. I'm not going to say it was by the cobra because then everybody knows where your spot was. <laughs> I'm kidding. He fished that one little spot and just keep pulling them out. How do you pull them out of that same spot? Well, they ain't lined, they must be lined up in there. One comes out of the way, the next one just rolls in. I don't know, but I know this. There's some fish you're only going to catch with the right bait and the right hook in just the right spot. And it gets hard sometimes. You've got to have the right color jig. And you've got to be there at the right time. And you've got to be there consistently until finally you're going to catch them. And you know what? Sometimes that's what evangelism's like. Sometimes you've got to go in there with one little hook and you've got to keep trying. You've got to keep baiting it. You've got to do something to get that fish interested in the truth that you have. Why? Because the fish is worth it. You want to know why people stop fishing? The fish aren't worth it anymore. They said it's just too much work. It's not enough payoff. I just, I just, I'm too old to do that. I just got fed up with it. I wait. You know what? My equipment's old. You know what? I'm just too rusty. I'm not very good at that. So I'll wait and let somebody else catch a fish. You know, there's a point in there, same book in Matthew uh, 17. Peter is, is talking with Jesus, and, and, and they're asked to pay a tax. This is a special moment because Jesus asked him, he said, Peter, do, do kings of this nation, do they, do they pay, get taxes from their kids or do they get taxes from strangers? Peter says, well, that's easy. They tax the strangers. The, the child of a king doesn't pay the tax, right? He's kind of exempt. And yet, here you are, the very child of God, the, the very son of God. Well, God himself is being taxed over his house. That just don't make any sense. But Jesus tells him something. He says, so that you don't offend them, I want you to go down to the water, bait a hook, throw it in the water, and catch the first fish you find. First of all, that's kind of weird because this isn't a whole lot of money, and Peter could have caught enough fish to have paid for it real easy. 
But he does. He says, Peter, I want you to go down to your bait of the water and the very first fish you pull out, open its mouth, reach in, and pull out the coin, the one coin that is the exact amount of money that's going to be needed to pay for me and you. Because God's going to provide what is needed, when is needed to get the job done. Why? Jesus did not tell him, go pay the tax so that we don't go to jail. He said, try not to offend them so they don't go to hell. There is a very big difference. He says, sometimes you have to bait the hook, not because it's what works best for you, but because they're worth it and it's what works best for them. Sometimes you may have to fish when it's cold outside or maybe it's even raining. Sometimes you've got to go to somebody when you don't really have time and you don't really want to. What you can't do is stop fishing. We can't stop fishing. I'm going to bait your book for you today. We're planning right now. We've got plenty of fish. Trust me, God only needs two, right? We've got plenty of fish. There's somebody, maybe God's telling you right now, they will come to church with you, but they might come to a fish fry. Look, if you can't bait somebody with a piece of fried fish, the problem's not your bait, the problem's you. I mean, sometimes you're just going to have to pick up your pride. Bait your hook. I heard you. You're not the first person to laugh at my little pole. Yeah, we call this one a long sword. I have a little bottle too. Slices just as good as the others. I may not have something impressive to use, but if God can use a fish, don't you think he can use you? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, Lord, thank you for using a little rod or a little fisherman like me. Lord, I thank you that you let me be a part of the big net. But Lord, don't let me ever forget the bacon. Every day to just be looking for those moments to draw people into you because they're worth it. Lord, don't let there ever come a time in my life that somehow I'm embarrassed of the message I have or the tools that I have to use. Lord, that I may be proud to call you my king. Lord, I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever be the great fisherman drawing people in by great nets. That's between you and, and you. But Lord, if nothing else, will you help each one of us to be just one man in a lifeboat, pulling somebody else out of the water that we've already had to be pulled out of ourselves? That we may follow you and you may make us. Fishers of men. We ask this in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Yes.
may be communion together and in the boat together. We ask this in your heavenly name. Amen. Amen. As I draw your attention real quick to our uh, sign up here, I know a couple of y'all have been out praying this week and need to report back to me so that I can uh, highlight off of the map as we get finished. And if you would like to be a part of our prayer walks and prayer drives, come see me anytime. I'll get you lined